Alexandria. I was like the only one who wrote the whole thing down. But I was afraid I would ramble too much, like now. Um, so I'm the maid of honor, and for lack of a better word that I can think of, the best friend. Um, and before I get too far here, I just want to take a moment and thank everyone for being here and celebrating my very best friend and her new husband on the happiest day of their lives so far. Um, thank you to everyone that helped in every way to make all of this happen. I especially want to say thank you to my second mom, our mom, for the many, many hours and more that were put into this amazing and beautiful and tasty event. <laughs> Since birth, really before then, I don't know if we can count that. Um, and I've honestly probably written this speech about a thousand times. Uh, the first time being years and years ago when you first learn about a maid of honor speech, uh, thinking that this would be the one thing in my life that I wouldn't procrastinate, but I was writing it this week, so. Um, I found a few of these old speeches in my old journals, and I just learned from them that our inside jokes are endless nonsensical and ridiculous and no one would get it. Um, we used to occupy our time on long road trips by just staring at each other until one of us lost, not by blinking, but by laughing. It's still funny to me. Um, I'm just not really sure why, but that head start that I thought I had back when I was 10, it's non-existent, so I had to start from scratch. Um, and I tried, I tried really hard to think of all these embarrassing stories about her. There's a lot of Corey. <laughs> and all the ones, anything that I could think of was an embarrassing story about me. So she just witnesses all these awful things that I do to myself. <laughs> it's been such an honor and a blessing to grow up with this amazing woman by my side and go through every first, every awkward moment, and every next big step together. There was never that one moment when we realized that we would be best friends forever. Um, it's just something that we've both always known. And I'm so lucky, lucky to have been able to have that blind, that just blind faith in someone. Like, I'm like, what do you mean? You don't have a best friend from winning your birth? I'm like, that's weird. Um, <laughs> I thought it was normal. It's hard for me to pick just one story to tell you that exemplifies just how great you both are. I mean, she is. <laughs> the rest of our relationship is built on these little, seemingly regular moments. We grew up as sisters, and in fact, we get mistaken as twins still to this day. As kids, it was funny to see other adults' faces as they puzzled over finding out that we were only four months apart. Just a couple weeks ago, to the surprise of both of us, we had to break it to someone in Vegas, this guy who was just insulted that we weren't twins. We have to apologize, sorry. <laughs> Um, but although we weren't real twins, we still fought like siblings with pillow barriers on the bed, silent treatments that felt like they lasted forever, maybe to us, but probably only lasted, I said a couple hours at best, she said probably shorter. <laughs> we have to explain to newcomers in our lives that when you tell one of us something, you're telling the both of us because of our twin telepathy, but also because we just can't keep secrets. <laughs> I'm not sure if Corey has accepted this yet, but it's fine. <laughs> Our friendship is something so special, and I always knew the day that we talked about late into the night as kids would finally come when she would meet a man who could also see just how amazing <coughs> and kind and giving she is. And then I would have to share. <laughs> when we first met Corey, and yes, the story has been told three times, but it's <coughs> Um, he came over with other friends who 
would also come over and they just brought him along. And I'm like, why would you do that? And um, eventually he just started coming over with all of his friends. And Michaela, being the nicest person I know, would of course never tell someone that they couldn't be there. But every time he left, we would question why he was there. And finally, I had to let her know, we had to let her know, he likes you, duh. And thus, the start of a beautiful, hate turned love relationship. He's nothing if not persistent. <laughs> I saw how Corey treated my best friend like an absolute princess. And I knew that he was her one. The way they love each other is so pure that it's like, it's literally too gross. <laughs> I have to look away a lot. Um, I've never seen my best friend so happy with someone else, and I'm so thankful that you both have found each other, and that she has someone else to take care of her and love her as unfalteringly and as much as I do. So Corey, you're very lucky to have her. Congratulations to you both. I wish you a lifetime of laughter and happiness where you can grab your glasses. <laughs>